So what do we, how do we handle this kind of strategies? Well, do not over lever in good times is a good advice. Do not trust Kelly because trust Kelly formula assumes Gaussian distribution of returns. And you, it is very difficult to apply Kelly when you know that the um, distribution is highly skewed, especially with a very fat left tail. So do not overlap, do not follow the recommendation of Kelly Farm. Always beware of the possibility that what happened when you are sitting on the left tail of the distribution, will it bankrupt you? Will it take a 35% or 50% drawdown of your portfolio? That's the first lesson. That's easy to accomplish, actually. Just think of the worst event in history that has ever happened and stress test your portfolio based on that event. Actually. In some sense, we are fortunate to have lived through the um, COVID-19 crisis because that is a great stress test for your minimum return. If you can pass that stress test, I think you are you are in good shape. So the second way to deal with the risk of a minimum return strategy is perhaps some would some of you will think stop loss, but one has to be careful here. The stop loss should be applied to a minimum return strategy only for catastrophic loss. In, in, in other words, you should make the stop very far away from the current price because stop loss always decreases backtest performance of minimum return strategy. That's very easy to understand, right? As I said, if you believe that this system is mean reverting, then the lower the price, the better, you, the more you should get in, right? Why would you stop loss? And in fact, there is a survivorship bias at work here. Those mean return strategies that test well in the back test have survived this drawdown. So naturally, if you know that this strategy survived the drawdown, you should have invested tremendous amount of money at the, at the bottom of the value, at the worst point of this drawdown, and you will have made tremendous money at that point, right? But what happened to those mean return strategy that didn't survive? You, when you backtest the mean return strategy, you would have discarded, oh, gee, this is this sucks. Let's throw it away, right? So there's a survivorship bias in terms of c collecting what, strata, what mean return strategy you should trade. And so the strategy that you are currently trading has already survived this backtest, and there's therefore a bias there. And so a stop loss would definitely decrease the performance of that backtest, but you never, never know how much a stop loss would have saved you from those strategies that didn't survive. So beware of survivorship bias um, in backtesting, not only for backtesting stock, but in general, in backtesting strategies in general. And in this case, a survivorship bias would mean that any stop loss would have decreased your backtest performance. But nevertheless, you should apply a sub loss to save you from the black swan risk. That is never seen in the backtest. And in particular, that is never seen in the backtest of the survived strategy. So it is a very nuanced answer to whether you should apply stop loss to a mean return strategy. Okay, so what about buying puts? I mean, many people think that, well, to protect, to hedge, or to ensure your portfolio against disaster, buying option would be the best way, right? Well, you know, let's say we want to consider buying put option. Which put option, by the way? We are trading a forex spread, right? Are you buying a put on one side of the pair or the other side of the pair? Or because, you know, sometimes we're long one side and sometimes we're long the other. How could you be buying puts on both sides of the pair? That would be very expensive. So buying put options work in theory, but in practice, it will just you know, waste away all the offer or the excess return of your strategy. It is not ideal, particularly if you're trading spread, because you are one, you 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 are never you you basically have to buy put and call on each side. So you've got to buy four options. That is very, very expensive for trading, mean reversion trading of the spread. It's not practical. Well, I, I think that uh, stop loss, as I said, um, is only for catastrophe insurance in a mean reversion strategy. If you place a stop loss that, like a, you know, a small number of cent deviation from the mean, like 2%, or two, two, two times or whatever, three times, 
uh, that you are essentially going to decrease the performance of the mean inference short because when the market is like up or down to three percent, a three, three times penalty duration, you are losing some money, but it's not a catastrophe. And you place a stop loss there, you are giving up all the large gains that is available to you. You want to put your stop loss at a, po a pain point that you cannot tolerate. You say, I really cannot lose 20% of my asset. Okay, you can put a stop loss before that. But you don't just say that, oh, I, I, I'm going to stop loss fee cent deviation. If fee cent deviation does not wipe out one quarter of your net worth and you don't mind, why stop at that point? Because it's always going to decrease the performance unless there's a catastrophe. 